let's speak to Professor Ian Fairchild from the School of Geography, Earth and Environmental Sciences. He's also a member of the Anthropocene or Anthropocene Working Group, which is fun to have to pronounce it, actually, which is developing the case for the vote on the Anthropocene Epoch. How do we pronounce it, Professor? Anthropocene. Anthropocene, okay. So, so uh, Rebecca got, got, got it right. I mean, some people are saying this is a, a, as big a change as, uh, as from the Ice Age. Is that how you view it? It certainly is a, a large change, yes. The, uh, in particular, the way that we're warming up the planet at the moment uh, is uh, potentially delaying the next uh, Ice Age. And in fact, we're pretty sure the next Ice Age won't happen as originally scheduled. So, uh, and, and the, the, the input of the sort of nuclear tests, the amount of concrete uh, and plastic as well, is that what people like you, in 10,000 years' time, will be finding within the Earth uh, to actually declare, perhaps 10,000 years later, that, that, that this was the era of the Anthropocene. Yes, that, that's the uh, other aspect of the Anthropocene. On the one hand, you've got uh, the aspect of the, the way that the Earth system is changing its behaviour. And the other aspect is how you would actually define, within archives that may still be here 10,000 years' time, um, when that change actually occurred. Uh, and so, uh, in the period after the Second World War, we had a, a tremendous explosion of um, human interference with the in environment, increased use of fertilizers, uh, concrete, uh, aluminium manufacturer, all the things that went along with having a much larger Earth's population. And many of those signals actually uh, find their way into um, objects as diverse as, as stalagmites and lake deposits and ice cores and so on. They have a different chemical signature um, from that time onwards. Yeah, absolutely fascinating. I mean, is there anything, is there anything positive in this new, this new uh, era? Well, this new era, I, I like to think of it as being the era where humanity um, has to think of itself uh, as a united force um, to look after the Earth. I mean, up until that time, uh, we were very divided uh, amongst nations. We had lots of wars and so on. Um, and there wasn't really an understanding about how we were actually affecting the planet on a very large scale. And so it wasn't really until the 1970s and 80s that a, a lot of this um, understanding took hold. And indeed, there have been uh, a number of concerted actions which have um, helped. Uh, for example, the, the way in which we've uh, uh, stopped a lot of um, uh, noxious emissions of sulfur dioxide from power stations. Uh, we've stopped emitting um, lots of fly ash from, from, um, from coal-burning uh, fire, fire stations. We've, we've taken action to um, uh, stop the big problem with the ozone hole in the, uh, in the Antarctic. And the, these are the results of um, international uh, treaties and international pressure uh, where the different governments are, are realising that there's something that they need to think about in, in common. And at the moment, of course, the, the, the really big change is, is the increase in, in carbon dioxide uh, uh, in the atmosphere. Yeah, I mean, uh, but are you, are you pessimistic about the future in a matter of perhaps just a few uh, thousand years when you think that, well, we're in, on course for the sixth next mass extinction of species uh, and I was reading in this the report I think that 25 percent of non-ice covered parts of the globe uh, in terms of uh, wildlife and fauna f f um, f face extinction as well so only 25 percent has been left I mean is, is that right I mean do you think that in 10,000 years time there will be people like you looking at, at this era and saying yes you know we, we can we can certify that it was the Anthropocene era Oh, I do, I do hope so. Um, but well, I think we, we, I, I we all hope so. <laughs> I mean, the human race at the moment, um, you know, you can think of it a, a little bit like driving a very fast car for the first time. Um, and all kinds of obstacles are coming our way, obstacles that we didn't expect. And actually, we, we, we're learning, we're having to learn very quickly how to, how to drive this, this car. Um, and it's taking us to places that we haven't been before. Um, and, and that's why it is so important for, 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 for governments to, to work together uh, on this and think about the longer term. For the moment, really, it's, it's, uh, we have to think about how we're going to get through the next few decades, the next century. Uh, 10,000 years is an awful long way in the future. Um, if you consider you know, where we were 10,000 years ago, that was the time when the very first um, uh, settled uh, peoples were, uh, were, were changing the ground and making the first sort of archaeological, settled archaeological sites. And uh, we've come an awful long way in this time. It's almost unimaginable um, what, what we might be doing in 10,000 years' time, providing that we haven't uh, ruined our home.
Yeah, or we're not all living on Mars. OK, uh, Professor Fairchild, thank you uh, very much indeed for joining us here on Global Today. Stay with us. Uh, still to come. Uh